Suspension bridges are mega projects, landmark structures, the most remarkable assets in road networks. And sometimes they are record breakers. But do you know how much cable material is used for these suspension bridges? Did you know that the total length of the wires used in the 1915 Chanakya Bridge main cable will be four times longer than the circumference of the Earth? Do we really need that much cable material for these structures? My name is Ajun Arajun and today I am going to present cable structure design of suspension bridges through stand reduction method. This method will be compared with current design of 1915 Chanakkale Bridge to demonstrate the design approach on a real structure. The strength reduction method is called saddle clamp system. So first of all, I will introduce it. Then I will show how design laws are obtained from global analysis model. After that, I'll go into some more detail about verification of cable structures according to design loads. Then I will continue with material quantity deduction provided with this system. And finally, I will show how this method can be constructed. Before the saddle clamp system, I would like to inform you about the current cable structure design of 1915 Chanakya Bridge to show which parts of the bridge are going to be revised with saddle clamp system. Parallel wire strands are used for the main cable and each strand consists of 127 wires. For side spans of the bridge, 148 strands are utilized while this number is 144 for the main span. This is a traditional method and main cable area is consistent with constant number of strands per span. However, saddle clamp system aims changing cable cross-sectional area with reducing number of strands in it. Release strands cannot just cut out since the continuity is the only way to present axial force on these tension elements. For that reason, wherever strands are reduced, release strands are transformed to the hanger cable. To achieve this transformation, special clamps are designed for saddle clamp system. Let's have a closer look at changing cable profile and saddle clamps. As shown in the figure, strands in the main cable is reduced from towers to main and side spans. Obviously, design laws on main cable are higher around towers, and for the current design, all spans were designed based on very limited region. However, in the saddle clamp system, strands are released with frequent intervals in order to come up with solid findings. At the release locations, current hangers are cancelled and release strands are transformed to the hanger cable. Obviously, these alterations are applied according to design laws on both main cable and hanger cables. Two or three strands are released from main cable at the selected points. In the end, both main and hanger cables are optimized that will be clarified in the following sections. Special saddle clamps are required for the alteration of cable profile. Let's examine saddle clamps in more depth. Saddle clamps are the key equipment for the system. They should be placed wherever strands are released. Unlike typical clamp, saddle clamp does not require socket or pin at the top part of the hangers. Instead, there is a trough at the bottom side of the clamp to support release strands and change their orientation. This is a type of saddle clamp which allows to release two strands. And this type of saddle clamp allows to release three strands from main cable. Strands will be transformed to a hanger cable after they completely left these special clamps. All in all, this is the saddle clamp system for cable structures of the suspension bridges. Now I will go on to highlight how design laws of the system is obtained from global analysis model. Two different global analysis models are created on SAP 2000. The first one reflects the current design, and the second one corresponds to cable configuration of saddle clamp system. For both models, structural elements are defined with exact stiffness and geometry. Cables of the structure are defined as truss elements with corresponding releases. Geometry defined in global analysis is the reference condition and it is the phase of the structure exposed to that loads. Hence, design loads of the cable structures are taken from envelopes of linear static load cases combinations. However, in the model analysis, stiffness of the structure at the end of nonlinear case of dead loads with large displacements is used. Caissons, approach bridges, and anchor blocks are not defined in the global models, since they have no noticeable effect on design of cable structures. Instead, boundary conditions are applied to avoid increased computational time. Let's move on and discuss how cable structures of the saddle clamp system are verified according to design loads. I will start with main cable. 
These graphs show design load of SLS and ULS cases taken from Global Analysis 1, which is created for the current design. Design capacity is simply calculated by considering total cable area, cable material, and safety factors. As you probably noticed, capacity is constant while design loads change dramatically per span. Therefore, number of strand in the main cable is optimized with saddle clamp system. An iterative approach has been followed with Global Analyze Model 2, as that load of the main cable decreased each time when strands are reduced. For the verification, nothing has been changed for the saddle clamp system but the number of strands. Similarly, graphs show design load of SLS and ULS cases taken from Global Analyze Model 1 for current design. Release strands from main cable will also serve as a hanger cable, so they should have a capacity as much as hanger cables of the current design. And as you can see, hangers have fluctuating design loads. So required number of strands for main cable and transformed hanger cables are deriving parameters of the system. Much higher partial material factors are adopted for transformed hanger cables. The first reason is to prevent cable rupture scenario. The second reason is related with the durability of spatial hangers since the continuity of main cable depends on it. Additionally, as the design life of spatial hangers should be the same with the main cables, they are not replaceable. So safety margin is higher for release strands. For saddle clamp system, the hangers that are not replaced with release strands are kept same with the current design. Although the material partial factor is much higher, release strands are still safer than typical hangers. Big fluctuations at the side spans correspond to three strand release locations and at the main span it is milder because two number of strands are released most of the time. To verify all special saddle clamps of the system, the highest load is applied to the most unfavorable geometry which is 90 degree angle between main and hanger cable. For the correct stress distribution on the trough of the clamp, an analytical field expression is defined in the abacus. Pretension is also defined for each bolt, and for the correct boundary condition, small portion of the main cable is defined in the clamp. Pretension loss is also considered in the different steps. Finally, misses stresses on the clamp are below the yield strength of the material, and this is the exaggerated deformed shape taken from abacus. Similarly, saddle clamps that allow three strand release are verified through finite element analysis on Abacus. For saddle clamps, after the complete release of the strands, clamp trough edge is rounded for all directions in order to accommodate transverse movements of the hanger cables. Beside the advanced analysis, the minimum radius for strands, maximum contact pressure, tie rods, and slipping of the clamps are verified according to the design basis of the project and euro codes. Cross-head slabs are anchorage points of the group of main cable strands. By post-tensioning applied through these areas, cross-head slabs are fixed to the mass concrete blocks. At the opposite direction, four strands are connected to the cross-head slabs with tie rods. As total number of the strands are reduced with saddle clamp system, it requires fewer cross-head slabs. However, since the total force is transferred in a more concentrated manner with saddle clamp system, stiffer cross-head slabs are utilized. Mrs. stresses under ULS loading are verified through finite element analysis model, and this is the exaggerated deformed shape taken from Abacus. Small portion of the anchor block is also defined for boundary condition. Strand loads and post-tensioning loads are defined externally. Tie rods and uplift of the cross-head slabs are also checked to verify the system. Now I'd like to talk about material quantity deduction. Main cables, hangers, cross-head slabs and clamps are revised cable structures of the saddle clamp system. This system requires 7.6 less main cable material compared to current design of the bridge. As special hangers of the saddle clamp system are treated as a main cable, Reasonable amount of hanger cable material is optimized with this system. This ratio also corresponds to a ratio of revised hanger cables. Although unit mass of cross-head slab is increased with saddle clamp system, as a result of using fewer cross-head slabs, almost 10% less cast steel material is used. Clamps of the system are the only type of cable elements that have higher material quantity. 
Only revised clamps are compared in this table and when all clamps are considered, it has a minor effect on general contribution of material quantity. Although it's not included in the quantity calculations, socket and pin attachments that are used to connect hanger cable to a typical clamp are not required for the saddle clamp system. At this point, I have to say that cost of cable elements are relatively high compared to other steel or concrete structures of the suspension bridges. By considering total cost of suspension bridges, cable and related cast steel cable structures have the highest contribution. Besides these elements, even caissons, towers and anchor blocks can be optimized as the dead load of the cable structures are reduced with saddle clamp system. Finally, let's move on and discuss construction phase. This photo was taken in the side after the installation of typical clamps. For saddle clamp system, special clamps need to be there before the strand of main cable. They can be placed on the catwalk mesh. Then strands that will be released at some point need to be installed starting from pylons. Saddle clamp system does not require sockets and pins at the top but they are needed in the below end of hanger cable so a socket in the end of strands should be installed at the side. Finally for the rest of continuous strands and typical clamps traditional methods can be followed. In summary strand reduction method is introduced and compared with the current design of 1915 Chanakka leverage. It was explained how design laws are obtained and how revised elements are verified. It was underlined that significant cost savings can be achieved. Finally, construction phase was briefly explained. This concludes my presentation, so let's move on to final comments. As a result of catenary curve profile of main cables, tensile force on strands decreases from saddles to sec points under the worst case loading. So method is valid for suspension bridges and effective for long spans. Moreover, as I underlined in the material quantity part, besides the optimization of cable structures, almost all main parts of the bridge such as pylons, anchor blocks and caissons can be optimized with saddle clamp system. The recent history of suspension bridges indicate that projects can be cancelled due to budget constraints, so proposed approach is applicable for suspension bridges in the future. It might be a little late for 1915 Chanakka bridge, but my question to you is, do we really need that much cable material for the next suspension bridge? Thank you.